when, when I first read the script, I just saw Henry. I really felt like I had, I didn't have to do anything as an actor. Um, that it's all on the page. You want to fight? Is that it? You want to fight me? Okay, I'll fight you. Come on. Come on, get up. I'll fight you, old man. I'll kick your butt. That's a good boy. I found this script to be interesting from another standpoint. And that is, uh, I have played several roles uh, in Arthur Miller plays, for instance, and, and, and they're easy to learn. Actors like to play them because everything emotionally makes such sense that you can have a, a, a monstrously long speech and you say, gee, I, I know it, wow, I know it, you know, because it, it, it just works organically. And much of Tom's writing is in that vein. You know, when, you, when you've been around a while and you've read a number of scripts, when you pick up a piece that has quality, it just, it just grabs you. Son. Sam Pa. Is there something you want to tell me? Not that I know of. A lot of times you get a script that not every relationship or every character is, is flushed out. And in Big Eden, every single person was. It was. It was flushed out, and, and you knew these people. You knew them the second they started speaking. Wait, wait, just give me a minute. Feel close. Close to what? Close to you. Can't you pick on someone else? No, I'm not. I'm... We used to be best friends, man. And I don't even know how to be with you anymore. You act like this is so easy for you, just cutting me out. Don't you care? Is it is it this easy for you? Dean, focus. I am. It's very actable. It's it's all about relationships. And I wanted to, I cared about every single person in the script. And I wanted to know what's gonna how are they gonna end up? Or who are they gonna have? Or where are they gonna be at the next Fourth of July dance? <laughs> What I really liked about it is that um, I got so used to doing these uh, period pieces with, uh, you know, a, a monosyllabic comebacks, which Pike had, but um, it, it was in a completely different situation. And I didn't have to kill anybody in this movie or run around with loincloth on. And I was happy to get up in the morning and put on a pair of pants instead of leggings and moccasins and stuff like that. It's, it's way easier to work with somebody who has, uh, who has their vision locked down tight and that's and that's what he had and he had a definite idea of what he wanted uh, his um, his characters to be like and the way he wanted to and just um, with the ebb and flow of the whole movie he, he knew exactly what he wanted and that's why it turned out the way that he did If there's a character that's closest to me or that I felt closest to within the cast of Big Eden, I think it was Henry because he's sort of the, he remains sort of the most mysterious even to me. Part of the mystery of Henry Hart is what is it that's keeping him from connecting with people? I don't have a choice. See, this is what I don't think you get. You do have a choice. You're choosing. That's exactly what you're doing. You're choosing to bail, as usual. I really feel that the the love that Henry is looking for is the kind of love that we think of as the, the missing half. God, he's got kids. Yeah. But what are they doing here? Dean moved back to town. What? When? Last week. Oh, isn't that funny? Grace, I, why didn't you tell me yesterday? I can't believe this. I told you yesterday you would have taken the first plane out of here. Way again. Look, Grace, I went to New York to go to school. You know that. I want to have this conversation oh, again. Whichever. Henry always seems like he desperately wants to leap off the end of the dock. Um, but it's difficult for him to, uh, to do that with uh, emotional relationships with people. Dean. I'm just so glad you're back. Henry, who desires Dean, has set up this barricade, which is just this romantic notion. 
between what he might really have with Dean, which is this love that Dean's describing, which is this true intimate friendship um, that they had. I don't know how much Dean is wrestling with his sexual orientation so much as he was as he is wrestling with his sexuality with Henry. The scene where Henry and Dean kiss in the kitchen is inevitable. Like you, ha you have to have that scene. It, that's been a long time coming. And it's interesting to me that Henry really does sort of initiate that scene, but that it's, it's Dean's moment to decide and tries and realizes that he, that actually isn't the nature of his relationship to Henry. I can't. Okay. I can't. I know. I am so sorry. Everybody wants to know whether Dean is gay or straight. And I think the interesting answer is in, somewhere in between and the Dean just is. Hey, I didn't see you. I know, I was standing there. Oh, are you, Dean? Are you okay? Yeah, I... Oh, God, okay. I think how she had to operate was that he, he's confused, but that he's straight and he's got a lot going on. And because of the scene, of course, where he's crying, it's, it's, I think she senses that he's gone through uh, a crisis, but I don't think she knows that. I don't think she goes, oh, he's struggling with whether he's gay or not. There is this odd destiny rolling through this movie, and I think that's part of it being a fable. Pike sees Dean and Henry embracing. Dean sees Pike and Henry talking. If those characters didn't see that, I, it all wouldn't happen. There is an alignment in Big Eden, and there are alignments in, in fables that, that happen, and that make a story clear. And that's Francis. How are you doing, honey? What's going on here? Oh, Pike. This is Cornwell. Afternoon. As far as Pike being Native American, I didn't sit down and say, okay, I'm gonna write this part, and this Native American is gay. I really discovered the character Pike first, and only sort of very late in the, in the writing of the script, figured out that he was Native American. The issue is not that um, Pike is uh, Native American and, and of a different race. It's that Pike is of a different culture and has so much um, that he and Henry have so much to offer one another. Udquata, they're also called. There's a, a myth in Onondaga tradition. Please. One trait, um, probably the biggest one that I, that, that I identify with um, about Pike is his ability to just be by himself and his, uh, and his dog. his own space and uh, that's that's what I like to have is, is my own space and uh, not not to be around people 24 7 I don't mean to pry I, I don't but uh, well I never suspected that you I mean but did you ever think you might when Jim Soames breaks it to uh, Pike that he knows who he is and he understands what's, what's going on, I think because he knows that Pike is having a hard time, he wants to ease his pain by telling him that it's okay. Well, this looks like a mighty fine dinner. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> 